So thank you, uh, Mindre, for uh, giving this opportunity. I think the uh, uh, theme is, uh, I think, uh, expectations, reality and challenges. What I would put it more so is what is the reality, uh, challenges emerge from reality and finally, what would be the expectations. Now, I being a laboratory physician, I've been uh, working in chain labs for a very long time. So uh, more so it would be uh, how do we go about uh, selecting an equipment and what are the expectations from the IVD. So uh, obviously I call it as a utopian dream as there is no perfect car in our budget similar there is no perfect equipment which we can choose. So uh, there are certain points which we compromise on and certain points we select. That's how the uh, thought process evolves for equipment selection. So uh, I being a laboratory physician, uh, what are the parameters for equipment selection? So there are a lot of, I'm just talking about technical, which actually we do in our laboratory. Uh, the uh, selection process for equipment in our lab goes is it whatever the vendors uh, move to our purchase team, the purchase team then directs it to us, ki so and so uh, vendor has come with so and so equipment. So what we go about is first evaluating in terms of the quality goals. Uh, second is, um, every uh, laboratory is of different size. So what is the throughput of the equipment? Third is what is the test menu? So obviously in hematology, uh, if 10, 15 years back, there was only one test which was CBC. But however, there are a lot of tests which have been evolved, uh, which can aid uh, diagnosis of nutritional anemias and hemolytic anemias. So we go about uh, in hematology as a test menu. For clinical chemistry and immunoassay, obviously wider the test menu, the better it is. Last but not the least, I think uh, Dr. Abhijit also covered a lot on it. What is the software capability of the vendor of the equipment and how it can shake hands with our existing lab information system? So in terms of uh, quality goals, is, uh, this is a bit technical. I think uh, the lab medicine people will appreciate these terminologies. So accuracy is what is the true value and what exactly value which will be report. Again is how it compares with the peer laboratories. So if I report an X value, what is the acceptable uh, value around X with some other lab reports? So that goes about accuracy. Precision is uh, as people are from hospital setup or routine setup. If a same patient uh, who is absolutely fine keeps on doing tests. So what is the repeatability variation which happens? So th this is one thing which we look at. There is something called as a total error. So, which is a combination of an accuracy and precision got together. These goals are defined by different uh, international communities. Uh, India uh, probably has not defined it, but uh, there are different communities like CLIA, which is in US. Uh, there's a European community, there's a college of uh, Asia Pacific. So, they have defined different quality goals for the equipment. So, we rate the equipment which we have uh, in uh, our uh, setup or in our lab based upon those goals. So any new equipment which comes to us, we ask for the vendor to keep that equipment in the laboratory. We compare it with either our existing setup which is there or the existing equipment because that is what is going on. However, it's a new technology, new equipment which we do not have any comparator, then obviously we compare it with our existing method or any other peer who has that equipment, we ask for some samples from them and we evaluate. Then is something called as linearity. It's again a technical term, but this is one term which uh, very is very important because it adds to a lot of cost saving also. Le linearity means the range uh, of a particular kit or equipment. So for example, some manufacturers measure sugar till only 400, but some manufacturers measure it to up to 800. So if a manufacturer measures up to 800, I don't have to repeat the test. So there's more first pass results. First pass results is if I run the sample first time, how much times I have to repeat it again. The uh, greater the first pass results, greater is the, uh, shorter is the turnaround time and better is the, uh, uh, what you say, cost savings or cost efficiency. Last is carryover. Again, it is a bit of uh, technical terminology. Uh, acceptability specifications depends upon obviously uh, now the equipment is shipped to us and then we have to verify. The simplest example I give is the uh, uh, the vehicle average which a Tata or a Toyota commits, we don't get the same vehicle average. We have to run it our own way. That, that's how we confirm what's the vehicle average. Similarly, there are commitments which are given by the equipments that they will achieve this much precision, this much accuracy. But we have to verify all those at our end. And then finally, we know what it can achieve. And then we have to compare it with what our peers give. So uh, uh, what, what expectation is from uh, uh, us as a lab physician in terms of 
quality goal selection is uh, that the equipment should be maybe tested in different geographies with different ethnicities. Uh, obviously, there is a, a big challenge in terms of uh, IVD labs having their own reference ranges for an Indian population. Uh, I think uh, me, uh, clinical chemistry maternal markers is one dual quadruple marker that's one particular uh, industry who has uh, achieved uh, reference ranges for Indian population. But I think IVD uh, lacks in terms of achieving Indian reference ranges for um, uh, uh, for these tests. More so we rely on maybe uh, European and American reference ranges. Coming to second and most essential is uh, the laboratory fitment that is a throughput. Now, uh, if you see, I come from a, a chain lab, so we have uh, labs all across the country, right from the seven sisters, Mizoram, Meghalaya, till in Jammu and down south, uh, till in the east in Rajasthan. So, the geographies are different, the temperature variations are there. Also, now if you see the way a diagnostic market is growing, it is growing at almost 20-25% year on year. Uh, the maximum growth is going to come from tier 2, tier 3 cities. Uh, that is the cities with population less than 5 lakh. So, my, my requirement would be a vendor who has a uh, throughput capacity of maybe 350 tests per hour for certain equipments to about maybe only 50-60 tests per hour in tier 2, tier 3 cities. But at the same time, what I would require is the same test menu across all. So, even if uh, it's a smaller equipment, I would require the same test menu. And if it's a larger equipment, I would require the same test menu. So, we can serve those kind of populations. There are few vendors who have tried to achieve that. So, that is one particular expectation settings in terms of, uh, the, uh, in terms of the uh, vendor. One thing is also, the other thing which comes to me is scalability. So, uh, in my lab, if I am doing currently say uh, 200 to 250 patients a day, if I want to scale it to 400, 500, I get two or three tie-ups, I acquire some laboratory and I have to scale up, then the existing vendor should have that capability, number one, to scale up. So, either you have a modular system to join equipments together or at the same time, uh, you have certain equipments with the same footprint so that I don't have to move on to a larger area. So, these are a few expectations that if you can, everybody wants to do more with less. So, uh, admin cost is a big cost, rentals is a big cost. So, if you have a smaller uh, footprint with a greater throughput, that is one of the expectations which is there from the vendors. Uh, as I mentioned, this point is the test menu. Uh, the equipment, the smaller the equipment, we usually have a smaller test menu. What it happens is it it, it uh, devoids uh, a tier two, tier three cities of these rarer tests, which are actually equally essential. So this is one request that uh, for an accreditation, it helps as well with the same equipment because the reference changes don't change, uh, so it's much easier to work that way. So this is actually a short presentation. So this is the last but not the least. So what is the software capability which we expect? So software capability is one what the analyzer itself can do or the equipment itself can do. And the second is what it can do with my existing software by transferring data seamlessly. So one thing is obviously bi-directional interfacing. This is a problem which we frequently face because the vendors are different is the engineer keeps on saying it's a problem of your software company. The software company keeps on saying ki engineer ke uh, analyzer ke port mein problem hai, ye cable nahi chalta hai and there's a lot of to and fro which is going. So, uh, I think, uh, so what we do is we call those both of the people together and say now you guys fight and give me a solution. But I think most of the people uh, who are uh, uh, into interfacing know this is a big challenge. Uh, second is, uh, uh, when we authorize reports or when we release reports, there are a lot of alarms which are not interfaced into the system. I am not talking specific to this IVD company, but generally now we have only uh, minded here. But the alarms also need to be interfaced. So what happens is we as pathologists or we as laboratory physicians, while approving, approving the reports, we know which results not to release and which results to release. Now there are certain middleware companies which have come, uh, which acts like artificial intelligence. So we know which results to uh, uh, release and which results remain. So the challenges with these middleware companies face is they have their own monopoly saying that we can, uh, uh, there are drivers, drivers are nothing but uh, uh, software devices which integrate analyzers to the software. So they say ki we work only with these uh, equipments, we don't work with these equipments. So how you guys can tie up with those uh, middleware companies which can help 
us choose you as one of our uh, vendors lastly is uh, equipment health report why this is important is uh, as the expansion is going to happen in tier 2 tier 3 cities there is no offense but the kind of skill which we have in tier 2 3 tier 2 and tier 3 cities is not as the skill which we have in a city like pune delhi chennai so we need more uh, software support or more software readiness in terms of supporting those uh, uh, technicians online so there are larger equipments of maybe 300 tests per hour those equipments have that capability in which there is an online support which the engineer gives but these smaller equipments do not have these capabilities so what happens is the uh, technician there is in the fix and in these locations we also don't have instrument backups so if i think ivd company can look into providing these software inputs to these smaller equipments which you have uh, that can also help us in a large way. Equipment health report which is generated every month. So, if an, uh, because there is a pressure of uh, doing a lot of tests in uh, less time, uh, sometimes the technician skips the daily maintenance or a weekly maintenance or a monthly maintenance. So, there are warning or alerts which are given by us by vendors. They send us an auto-generated mail in last 15 days these many uh, maintenance have been skipped. So, uh, this is one of the expectations from uh, IVD company. So I think, um, thank you for this opportunity.